everybody. It's Frankie Lou and Angus and we're coming to you today from just outside the greenhouse of the Grow Together homestead. It's mason bee season. That's right. This is when the mason bees start emerging and uh, it's a big favorite with us because we absolutely love mason bees. We love our honeybees and we love working with them but honestly if most people can't keep honeybees it's it's hard. Uh, yeah. It's a lot of work isn't it? Yep but these aren't. Yeah. Uh, Mason Let him go. <laughs> give them a place to um, go and yeah. Yeah, and they actually the cool thing about Mason bees is they're actually far better pollinators than honeybees are because they're uh, they're messy, exuberant, crazy little bees. Whereas honeybees are very meticulous, and yeah. Mason bees are a little bit more crazy, <gasps> <laughs> and they get pollen all over themselves. So then, uh, oh, I'll stick it on my head. Oh, I'll stick it. The honeybees. Yeah, mm. yeah. Honeybees actually tuck the pollen very carefully away in little pockets on their legs, whereas <laughs> mason bees just go crazy. So it's one of the reasons why we like them for pollinators. Yeah. Also, they're uh, local, right? They're an indigenous species. There's yeah. lots, well, there's several indigenous species of uh, mason bees and bumblebees in this area. So we like to support them. And why are they called mason bees, Angus? Because they work with like clay and stuff. Yeah. So what happens is when a mason bee, uh, when a female mason bee is laying her eggs, she puts in a pollen plug, she puts in a larva, well an egg, and she puts in a clay cover. Cover. So that and then repeats. Yeah. And she'll do that six or seven times, or even more, depending on the length of the tube. And she usually lays. Who who gets laid at the end of the tube? Um, the males. Yep. And that's because they'll wait for the females to come out and then they'll pounce on them and breed with them almost right away. The boys will come out uh, shortly before the females. They'll go around, do their thing, then come back and breed with the females. And how do we know when it's a male? Well, they have like a mustache. Yeah, they're really cute. We've got some great images we'll show you of little boys coming out. And the way that they develop, their life cycle is really crazy. They actually develop into a full adult size inside the cocoon so, so the mom, mom will lay the, the egg with that pollen ball, they'll eat it, cocoon up, develop into a full grown bee in the cocoon and then go into dormancy and they do that like in the fall. Yep, and then in the spring they'll bite out. They'll chew their way out, you can hear them chew chew chewing their way out, but they'll, they actually develop stay in the in the adult form in the cocoon for almost half a year it's pretty cool isn't it yeah longer than they actually live for that's absolutely right angus is absolutely right they actually spend more time in dormancy than they do alive rough flying around pollinating and being real cute another reason why mason bees are great is because uh they're harmless yes they don't sting well they do but if you at uh, vault and very rarely and if they it's like a mosquito bite. Yeah, they are capable of stinging, but you basically would have to be squishing one in order for it to do it. They are the most gentle bees you'll ever see, and we love handling them. So, yeah. um, we're just gonna show you some cool stuff that we did with our own bees releasing and how we maintain their little um, houses. Angus builds houses for them as well. Um, basically, they'll go into any block of wood that's got some nice deep holes. With yes. Yeah. You need, all you need to um, make a bee house is um, a block of wood and a drill. Yeah, they do have different, and if you have different sized drill holes, that's great. You do want to make sure that you're putting those mason bees nests somewhere where they'll be protected from birds and water. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So we like to put keep ours in the greenhouse, both because it protects the the mason bees and it also keeps them near the stuff that I want pollinated. Right? Yeah. So. Um, yeah, we'll show you some of what we do with them, and yeah. we'll be back in just a sec. So this is oh, when he I'm, pooped. He pooped on you. <laughs> so this is one of your favorite times of the year, isn't it, Angus? Yeah. Looks <laughs> like cement. Yep. They're pretty darn cute, and they're very harmless. So if you can't have a beehive, which most people can't, honestly, let's be honest, it's a lot of work in doing a beehive, isn't there, Angus? Yeah. For honeybees. It's wonderful, but it's a lot of work. These guys are next to nothing. And we'll show you a little maintenance that we do, but it's pretty great having them around. Okay, so this is a female mason bee here. And um, you can see why they often get mistaken for flies, because some of the species are quite fly-like. 
she really does look like a fly but this is a mason bee so be careful what you're swatting at Shaking too much. I want to hold them. Oh, hi. See, we try to release them near the nesting fly sites, and you can see they're checking it out. They haven't even flown away yet. That's a really good sign. They'll probably come back. I thought I was. These are mostly bigger ones. <laughs> okay, so these are some cocoons I'm going to put up near the nesting box. They are, I can just sort of hear them scratching around inside. We usually try not to release the... Um, the cocoons take them out of refrigeration until we see start seeing some blooms so as you can see I do have some blooms going here so they'll be all right and then also there are a few native flowering plants that I have nearby little shrubs and trees that'll help to feed these guys because mason bees are a lot lazier than honeybees they actually whereas a honeybee will travel kilometers for food these guys will travel a maximum a couple hundred feet so you want to make sure that they have water nearby, that they have blooms nearby, and a nice um, soil source so they can make their clay. We've got very clay soil here on our property, so we don't need to put any extra clay up for them because there's plenty of it around. So this may not be the prettiest plant that we have in our yard, but it is for us one of the most valuable because as you can see, it's already begun doing its, um, putting out a few flowers and some pollen and I don't know if you can see this, but it's absolutely buzzing with tons of little mason bees who are getting their first feed. We don't even have a lot of dandelions out here right now, but we do have this and it's a busy, busy plant. <laughs> so if you want to support your native bees, one of the things you can do is have native plants around because they tend to evolve together. Okay, so I hope that was interesting. I hope that you can get into mason bees as much as we do. Yeah, they're really cool. Yeah, we do. We still do purchase a few every year just in case we do have a problem with mites. And you can see from the videos I showed you that mites did attack one of our nests this year. So it can happen. Um, and we did release a whole bunch today. Yeah. And there's still a couple left that we have to do in the fridge we'll do later. but. We thought you might, guys might want to see this today because a lot of you um, have the ability to help out these little native pollinators yep. that are around here. If yep, you, all you need is a block of wood and a drill, Yeah, like I said. And a nice secure place to put them and you can help support these, these native bees and uh, it's a great thing. So I hope that you'll, you, this was an interesting. I hope you'll ask us questions. And like we always, oh, and subscribe <laughs> <laughs> if you want to, if you don't want to miss out any, on any of our content. And like we always say, make sure you take the chance to grow together today. Have a good one. Bye.